it. Page 43 of your grammar books. Talking about adverb clauses today. So an adverb is a group of words that begins with, or an adverb clause. Now we know what an adverb is. We've talked about that. It, it's a word that often ends in L-Y uh, and it adds to the verb. They were nice enough to kind of give us a clue in the name of the word adverb, so that's nice. Um, and then now we're talking about a clause, which means it's more than one word, but it's not a whole sentence, so it's a part of a sentence, basically. And uh, it begins with a www word, which is, do you remember www is when, while, and where. Okay, we're going to talk more about that in a second, but you also know that as like the beginning of the World Wide Web. If you remember that, www, we don't really use that anymore, but because now you can just type in the address. You can type in, you know, google.com. You don't have to do www.google.com anymore or Amazon or wherever you're going online. You don't have to use that anymore, but you used to. Um, and it contains a subject and a verb. An adverb clause is a dependent clause, which means it must be added to a sentence that is already complete. Basically, it does not stand alone as a sentence. It's, it's part of a sentence, so it's depending on the full sentence to make sense. All right, there's an acronym, and it's something that this program has put together for you to, to remember, to help you remember. But first it says www word plus subject plus verb. So the word, one of these W words, plus a subject, plus the verb, that is called an adverb clause. And here's the acronym. Okay, before you think this is too corny, because it is a little corny, I will admit that, but it's going to help you. www.asia.b So you're going to pretend like that's actually a website. And really, honestly, the program came up with this because you could go to www.asia. You'd have to put .com, but it would take you to the country or the, the continent Asia, and it will you know, give you information about traveling there and blah, 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 so it's, it's safe. Don't do it right now though, okay, Bronx? <laughs> Don't go there now. www.asia.b has nothing to do with Asia, let me tell you that. This has nothing to do with Asia or the website. It is just a tricky, fun little acronym for you to remember to help you remember what those words are. That's it, okay? You don't have to go to that website or anything. It's just helping you remember. The eight most common WWW words. All right, here they are. When, while, where, as, for A in Asia, since, for the S, if, for the I, although, for the A, and because, for the B. Those are the, ac that is the acronym for those WWW words. Now, the reason why they have this here is that's going to help you identify the clause because it will start with one of these words. When, while, where, as, since, if, although, because. WWW, A, S, I, A, B. Okay. You're going to use this page, trust me. When you do your homework, you're going to need to come back to this page to refresh your memory on what those words are. Try to memorize that, and that will help you identify the adverb clause. So you're going to place parentheses around the adverb clause and write AC, that stands for adverb clause, above the WWW word. Write V above each verb and S above each subject. So there's some steps to identifying the adverb clause. Here we have, because Robin was now an outlaw, he had to hide where the sheriff could not find him. 
because is one of our words in our www.asia.b because so that is your cue that that's the beginning of the adverb clause okay because robin was now an outlaw and it has to have remember it has to have the w word plus the subject plus the verb so you've got here the subject is robin and the verb was was now an outlaw so you finish out the rest of that clause right there okay was so you have to have the w word the subject and the verb okay and then where that is one of our w words right here where the sheriff there's the subject and the verb could not find him okay so um those are the things you've got to remember the w word plus the subject plus the verb now it doesn't end at the verb it ends at the whole clause end so these are nouns and, and pronouns here this is a noun outlaw him is the pronoun so it's going to end with one of those okay and then we have some comma rules in relation to that a comma is used to separate items in a sentence a comma is used after but not before an adverb clause so after the clause notice on these two well this is the end of the sentence so we don't want to put a comma there but here there is a comma after the clause use a comma after an adverb clause that comes before a main clause do not use a comma before an adverb clause so only after down here think about it many words can be used as different parts of speech however a word can perform only one part of speech at a time we've talked about that before sometimes it's an adjective sometimes it's a pronoun but in the sentence it only functions as one thing for example as as can be a preposition that begins a prepositional phrase and as can be a www word remember it's right here for asia as that begins an adverb clause here's the prepositional phrase as an outlaw robin hid from the sheriff as an outlaw is a prepositional phrase the pattern is um the prepositional as the preposition as plus a noun which is outlaw and there's no verb remember when we talked about the prepositional phrase there's no verb with that one there is with an adverb clause and maybe that part of that clue is that the adverb has the word verb in it so you do have that in your adverb clause um, here it says as he did in the forest robin collected a band of loyal men as he hid in the forest is the adverb clause as he hid in the forest and the pattern is the www word as plus the subject he plus the verb hid so they're comparing the two things okay they're comparing the prepositional phrases and the adverb phrase prepositional phrases have preposition and noun no verb the adverb phrase has the www word, the subject, and the verb. It's a lot to take in. Um, so we'll just keep chipping away at it. Go ahead and turn to page 45. 45, and let's try to practice this. I am going to continue giving you the answer key. I think that is really helping you. I do want you to try to do your homework without looking at it first. Good. I see nodding. That's good. And then use the answer key. And if, you're, if your home teacher is okay with you using it by yourself, I'm okay with that. I trust you guys. Um, you can check your own work and then fix it and then submit it. Okay. Um, do I have any volunteers to read this 
sentence to us today? Anybody feel like doing that? <sighs> Not really. Okay, I'll read it. It's okay. For an entire year, Robin sheltered in Sherwood Forest while he met other outlaws and gained valuable hunting skills. All right, our vocabulary is sheltered. That basically means he hid or found a refuge, right? He, he found a shelter to hide in, uh, which was in Sherwood Forest. So we know the vocabulary just means he went to go hide there. Article, you know what to do here. A and the, write it in. Let me zoom in a little bit here so you can see what's going on. Um, nouns, let's see. Bronx, could you start us off with some nouns? See how many you can find on there. Um, Robin, Sherwood Forest, Outlaws, Skills. Oh, one more. One more. Oh, year. Year, good. And I just realized we, we labeled the articles, but we didn't find it in here. So, Bronx, can you do that one too? Just tell us what the one article is in our sentence. Um... That's the one that's either a and or the. Oh, oh yeah. Um, um, and. That's it. There's just one. And that's it. Yep. Yep. Good job. Excellent. Nice. Okay, so we need a pronoun. Remember Thank the you. pronouns take the place of a noun. So, Allie, where, what's our pronoun in this sentence? Is it he? Yes. And then since that one was a quickie, I'm going to ask um, Allie again, how about adjectives? So this time you'll look at your nouns and look before the noun and see if there's a word that kind of gives us more information about the noun. Sheltered. Sheltered. No, that's actually the verb. So let's look at year. Um, what kind of a year was it? If you look back before entire. that, entire, yeah. So adjective here, ADJ, the entire year. How about here, look for your noun. Um, this one doesn't have an adjective with it, but outlaws. Which, what kind of outlaws are we talking about? Look back before outlaws, what kind of outlaws? Ali, I'm still on you, so. Um, Outlaws is the not a noun. So what adjective okay. right before that? Other, good. And then the we have two more adver adjectives actually. So let's look at the noun skills. What kind of skills are we talking about here? Remember, we ask whose or what kind or how many. That's how you find your adjectives. So we got what kind of skills are we talking about here, Allie? Hunting. Hunting. And there's one more. Valuable. Valuable. Good. Nice. Good job. Valuable hunting. So there's two adjectives in a row, and that's okay. You can have that sometimes. Um, moving on to Abby, what is our coordinating conjunction here? It would be and? Yes. CC over and, that was easy. Now the prepositional phrases. So I'm going to have Abby help us with this one. And if you need to look back on page 43 at those preposition words, you can, but remember it's got a, it's the prepositional phrases have the preposition and a noun or pronoun. Uh, would it be for an entire year? Correct. That's one of them, for an entire year. So go ahead and underline that. Oh, and we need to label it, too. We're going to label it with a number two because it's also a prepositional opener. We've been talking about that, right? Let's put the word prepositional here. 
prepositional. There's another one, one more prepositional phrase in here. In Sherwood Forest? Forest. Yes. Correct. In Sherwood Forest. Yep. Good, you got that. Adverb clause, which is what we just learned. Um, the adverbs, uh, remember www.asia.b. So we're looking for one of those words. So I'm going to go back to Bronx. Do you see one of those words? You can look back on 43 if you need to. For the, um, the adverb clause? Yeah. Okay. That's the one where we use www.asia.b. Okay. I believe while. Yes. That's where it starts. And then okay. we're marking it with parentheses. So where, where am I going to end my parentheses? Remember, this one does have a verb. We haven't labeled the verb yet, though. So it starts at while. And it goes all the way. I'm going to help you with this one, Bronx. It goes all the way to the end at skills. That's the whole adverb clause. So right above while, I want you to put AC adverb clause. while he met other outlaws and gained valuable hunting skills. So you're going to end on a noun with this one, but you got to make sure your verb is in here and your verb is met. Actually, we can go ahead and label that met and gained. And your subject was he. So we got he met and gained. That's why we use that whole part of that sentence for your clause because you got to have all that in there. You got to have your subject and your verb and your www word. Okay. In the first half of the sentence, I'm going to stay with Bronx for a second. What is the subject in the first half of the sentence? <clears throat> Who are we talking about? Um um the first half? Yeah, right before the adverb clause. What's the subject of the first part of the sentence? <clears throat> Robin. Good. Robin. So put an S above that. And then what is the verb that is paired with that subject? What did he do? Um, shelter? Yes, sheltered. V. Or verb. I put it up high so it's next to that on the same line as the subject there. Nice. And we already labeled our opener because it is a prepositional phrase. I mean, it's a prepositional opener and a prepositional phrase, so it's both. Hold on. Hey, shh, you're fine. It's probably a squirrel or something like that. <laughs> Um, let's see, capitals, alley, what kind of capitals do we need? Four. Four, good. What else? Robin. Good. Shar Sherwood Forest. Uh-huh, Sherwood Forest, good. Comma, it says one, so we're either, we either need to take out a comma or we need to put in a comma. And it's, it's telling us we need to take out this comma right here. And remember the comma goes after the adverb clause. Well, this one ends at the end, so obviously we're not going to put a comma at the end of the sentence but there does not need to be a comma in the middle of the adverb clause. That all stays together without a comma. Our end mark is a period. Okay, we made it. That was a lot to mark. Um, so you're gonna rewrite this as part of your homework right here and then do the next three pages like we usually do. Please, please, please go back to that page 43 this, this week when you're working on this. 
um, to look at that list, to refresh your memory about what a clause, adverb clause is. Do it the best you can by yourself, and then if your mom or your homeschool teacher is okay with you checking it yourself with the answer key, then you can do that. I'm gonna put that in your homework. Okay, any questions about grammar? No, good. Done with that. Now, I'm gonna get out that story again, uh, the miller, his son, and, and the donkey story and you'll need your homework in front of you so you make sure you have that get my story out real quick um, I think I already told you at the beginning but I am going to help you organize your binder today because we need to get to that okay Um, we already read the story last week and just a little refresher you know these guys are having to sell their donkey maybe they need the money and everybody looks kind of sad in the picture and they're on their way to sell the donkey this is sad for me because I love donkeys and I can't wait to have one someday I actually want two because you know they got to have a buddy so I can't just get one so someday I'm going to tell you about that. I don't have a donkey yet, but someday I will have two. <laughs> and I'm thinking, side note, because, you know, donkeys are so cute. I love donkeys. Now I'm going to start talking about donkeys. I'm sorry. I can't help it. I love them so much. Anyway, I'm thinking about naming one like Taquito and one Gordita. Or what about um, the taquito and burrito? Ah, taquito and burrito. So one of them probably is going to be a female. So I need a female name, though. I guess, well, let's see. Because burrito is a, is a male, ends with O. I think that's how it is in Spanish, right? If it ends in O or if it ends in A, uh, it's female. I like burrito, though. Taquito and burrito. Maybe I should get two boys. They could be brothers. Taquito and burrito. <laughs> I don't know. I might have to have some kind of a vote with you guys someday when I get... We'll see what I end up with. But anyway, back to the story. <laughs> They're just so cute. Their ears, you know? They're just so long and ginormous and then fuzzy. And, and then when they get excited, you know, you can't help but laugh at the sound they make. It's just hilarious. <laughs> and I have a neighbor out the back here that has a donkey. And I just, I know when it's breakfast time and when it's dinner time because I hear him and he's just so cute. Um, they're also, <laughs> I'll stop. I, I promise I'll stop. But they're also really good at protecting your herd. Maybe I already told you this. But anyway, like if you have goats like me, um, and they're out there, the donkey will actually attack a mountain lion and a bobcat and a wolf and any kind of predator that would want to eat a goat. The donkey will actually charge and trample and even bite and break their neck. And so, I mean, they're like, they're amazing animals. And I think they get a bad rap because people think they're dumb and they don't, they're stubborn, you know, all those little stereotypical things about donkeys, but they're actually uh, really great to protect the herd, which is one main reason why we want to get them. And the next main reason, which is right there neck and neck with protecting the herd, is because they're just so cute. <laughs> they're just so cute and funny, and they make me laugh. Okay, I'm done. Back to the story. Uh, and so this is like, sad for me because they're having to sell the donkey but along the way they have all these people that just cannot mind their own business they're just like busy bodies you know gossiping and they just can't keep their thoughts to themselves so they're telling them how they should be doing this and they're butting into their business and then at the end <sighs> I really don't like the way this story ends. Personally, I would rewrite the whole ending of this. It's just... 
I mean, tying the donkey up? Who would have done that? Okay, so anyway, donkey, donkey falls into the river, but you know, the donkey does know how to swim and the donkey does get out of the river and lives happily ever after and he finds another donkey family to live with at my farm. <laughs> the end, okay? All right. Now, you did an outline this week it was not your typical keyword outline because we've changed it up a little bit. Now we have the story sequence chart. So here's what we're going to do because I know this is new for you guys going through the, the style, the pattern of the story and you used some words from the story. It's okay if you use some words not from the story, but let me hear um, and you guys rewrote the whole story too, didn't you? Yeah, you did. You did both of that. Was that kind of a lot? Did that take a long time for you guys? Yeah, I see I see Abby nodding, kind of. Yeah, because I heard from my other class that, um, whew, that was too much work. So I'm, I'm still trying to like figure out. So this week's going to be lighter homework for you guys, okay? So don't worry. Um, I'll, I'll pay more attention to that. I should have had you just do the outline part. <clears throat> so anyway, I think what I'm going to have you guys do now is just take turns reading a paragraph because it should have been a three paragraph rewrite of the story. And so I'm going to have Bronx do paragraph one, Allie do your paragraph two, and then Abby, you can read your paragraph three. And we can kind of just see how you guys did using your keyword outline because that was kind of a lot to digest. So Bronx, whenever you're ready, just tell us your, you can just read. By the way, did you guys create a new title yet or not yet? Yeah, you did, okay. Um, tell us your title, Bronx, and then just read paragraph one. Of my story? Of your, your version of the story, yeah. Okay. Not all advice is good advice. Good, okay. One day, the poor miller and his son were, work, were walking to town to sell their donkey. Yeah. The helpful son was very obedient to the miller. Along the way, they met the, some opinionated and very bossy people. Their advice convinced them to do exactly what they said, whether or not it made sense. Good. I like how you started that. That was really good. And what was their advice? Do you remember? Um, it was why oh, walk when you could ride, right? And you didn't need to include yep. that. That's okay because you, you kind of left it hanging with the reader, which is fine because I, I think that makes it a little more entertaining when you're like, well, what kind of advice did they give? I'm not sure. Let's find out. So good i like it and i like how you worded that so good job bronx okay let's go on to ali tell us your title first and then you can read your second paragraph uh, i i did poor donkey okay that's good i love it poor donkey and he is poor oh. <laughs> i didn't realize how short my paragraph was though so it's that's not all right <laughs> that's okay just tell us what you have we can talk about it the nice donkey needs some help. He he needs help for him to live. They try to help as the um con, con something to walk. They go past a river. Uh, okay. Confusing. No, 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 you're fine. Don't worry about it. It's okay. So uh, spell that word that you got stuck on so I can figure out what word it is. Do you know how to spell it? C O U N T I N E. Um, I wonder what word you were trying to put there. County? County? Oh, it was continue. Continued? Yeah, as they can. Oh, ah, okay. Walk. Okay. 
Yeah, continued. Okay, right, read that paragraph one more time. The nice donkey needs some help. He needed help for him to live. They tried to help as they continue to walk. They go past a river. Okay, good. And then um, I like that as far as it makes sense. It does kind of change the story a little bit. So look at your keyword outline really quick for me. Um, and we'll think about what words you picked for that. So what words do you have there for your Roman numeral two? Um, first I put help nice donkey. Okay. And then for one I put needs help and then live. Okay. And then second, don't help do. Okay. And then three, not, not help. I don't know. I can't read the bottom. I like messed up on that. Okay. Okay. So what I'm thinking is that middle section of the story, that second paragraph is supposed to be introducing the conflict, right? and the problem. And it sounds like you chose to have the problem be the poor donkey, that the donkey um, was helpless, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so actually what I think the problem was in the original story, anybody want to chime in on that? What do you think? Let's hang on to that for a second, Allie. But what do you guys think is the problem here in the main story? What do you think, Abby? Do you, what do you think the problem of the story is? Um, well, every time someone told them to do something, they would listen to it. So, like, I'm not really sure how to explain it. Yeah. Well, you're right, because they're just trying to, all they want to do is sell the donkey, right? They want to get to town and sell the donkey. But the problem is everybody's butting into their business, right? And they're all giving them their advice. So the problem is they're listening to their advice. You're right, Abby, that's correct. So um, that changes the story a little bit, Allie, when you talk about the donkey, because it's not really the donkey that has the problem, even though the donkey's sad, and obviously the donkey doesn't want to be sold. But the problem in the story, this is the like the bulk of the story, is all of these people giving advice. Okay, so keep that in mind, because I think I'm going to have you redo that middle paragraph there. Um, but let's pause for a second, because that, that first paragraph is pretty easy, because you're introducing the characters, you're introducing the setting, and that one's pretty easy, and I, I'm sure you guys, um, and I'll be checking that when I read your homework. But before going on to the third paragraph, Abby, what do you have, can you read your title first and then read your second paragraph let's see what you have for that one okay um my title is face down in the river oh <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> tragic no i'm sorry <laughs> it's okay it's just a story it's just a story <laughs> anyway okay. that's a good title it is a good title um, they had been traveling on the donkey for quite some time when a group of women passed by. The smallest woman of the group quickly spoke up and said, it's terribly hot today. Why don't the both of you get off the poor thing? So the miller, the miller and his son got off the donkey. They continued their journey into town, but every time they encountered a new person, they were told on how they should walk or ride the donkey. Eventually, the miller and his son were once again on the donkey's back. They were near a bridge that led into town when yet another man ordered them around. You've worn this animal out. Why don't the both of you carry it? And that was my paragraph. I love it. That's good. And I noticed that you went way more than just four sentences, which is great. Because I meant to tell you guys that before you did your homework. You can add to that. You don't have to have stick to just four sentences. And you elaborated, which was good. So basically, you gave a little like snapshot of what was happening in the middle where everybody was giving their advice. And then I like how you said, and finally they ended up, um, I think you said at the 
bridge? Is that where you said they ended up? Um, yeah. And they had listened to everybody's advice. So that is the problem. That's good, Abby. So um, let me go back to Bronx. I'm curious what your second paragraph says, because that was a little tricky. So let me hear your paragraph two. On oh, my second paragraph? Yeah. Okay. Um... Let me get this sorted. Okay. They were told that the sun should ride, then the dead, then both at the same time. The, the last advice did them in. The people thought that the miller and his son should carry the donkey into town. Okay, good. So you were talking about the problem as in the donkey, I mean, the people bothering them and giving them advice. And that was the problem. They just wanted to go to town. Um, yeah. Good. Okay, good. You guys are on the right track with this. And you are too, Allie. I just feel like you might need to change that middle paragraph a little bit more. And rather than focusing on the donkey, focus on the people that are butting into their business and giving that advice, okay? So I think um, for yours, you'll need to kind of change that up a little bit this week, that middle paragraph. But uh, Bronx and Abby, you guys are on the right track with that. So now let's look at the third paragraph. Um, so I'm trying to think of how best to do this here because it's hard not being able to see the paragraph but let's go let's stay with Bronx on this one because you just finished your second paragraph go ahead and read to us your third paragraph okay um as they walked with the donkey on Next. their shoulders they received some odd looks and people began to laugh at them the donkey could not stand it any longer and broke the rope falling off their shoulders into the river. The miller and his son realized that not all advice is good advice. Good, okay, good. And I like, even though I don't like that story, how it ends, but I like that you explained what happened and then you explained what the message was. So that, that was a good ending to that. And I remembered your title and it, you brought those words into your last sentence. So good job with that. I'm curious, let's go to Abby for a second. What's your third paragraph that you have? Okay. Um, not wanting to start a fight, the miller and his son jump, jumped off the donkey, tied its legs together, hoisted it upon their backs and continued along the bridge. The sight of the donkey being carried caused many people to laugh. The donkey, who didn't like the laughter or the way he was being treated, broke through the ties and fell face down into the river. Okay, good. And I hear your title in there. That was good. Um, the only thing you forgot was the lesson that they learned. So you can think about that this week and add that to your story. Because we're going to keep working with the same story for this next week. We're going to add some things to it and kind of change it up a little bit. So Abby, be thinking of one more sentence. Um, and it can be before, let's see, because you have that title. So your last sentence has to have that. So I'm wondering if you could, you might need to play with that a little bit. Because I like your title, Face Down in the River. <laughs> I like it and I hate it at the same time, but it's good. <laughs> and it is kind of catchy because you're kind of the reader might be like what what's going on here and want to read that so i like your title so maybe figure out how you can tie in your message of the story that they learned to not always listen to everyone everyone's advice not always take everybody's advice that's a good life lesson for you guys too because in your life and even now that i'm older um you know, the advice never stops coming from people, whether you ask it or not. And if you always listened to everybody's advice, your mom, your dad, your brothers, your sisters, your friends, your neighbors, the people in the grocery store, you're just going to go crazy trying to figure out what you need to do. I will tell you this, though. 
your mom and dad have the best advice, okay? Because they know you best. I do want to say that. So listen to your mom and dad. Other people around you, you can kind of take it or leave it. You don't have to always listen to everybody's advice, even me. You don't have to always listen to my advice about life or whatever. But that is something to keep in mind from this story. Um, anyways, I so this week, let's see what time we got. Okay, we're good. Like I said, we're going to work with this story a little bit more. So... We need to add this week some L-Y adverbs to your story. Um, that's something you guys have learned how to do and I wanna come up with a little list together uh, that you can refer to this week as you're doing your homework. So go ahead and get a clean piece of paper out and we'll go ahead and make a little list for you to refer to this week. Go ahead and put your name and date on the upper left name here. Um, today is October 25th. <clears throat> and we might as well title this the name of the original title so we know what story we're talking about. The Miller, His Son. It's a long title. And there I'm going to put donkey here underneath. <clears throat> I like that you guys thought of shorter titles. I'm not a super fan of really long titles, but either way is fine. And under this, uh, I want you to just put L-Y adverb list. And then as soon as we're done with this list, um, I am going to have some, hopefully have some time to organize your binder a little bit. So let's think of L-Y adverbs, okay? We know a little bit about adverbs. Uh, what is, and thinking on the story at the beginning when they're traveling to town to sell the donkey, they're, they're somethingly traveling to town to sell their donkey. If you have an idea, you can just unmute and say it. What's an L-Y word we could use there? about how they're traveling. <clears throat> Could be slowly. We're just gonna make a list here. Could be, if it were me, sadly, right? Sadly traveling, traveling to town. Um, it could be let's move on to a couple other different types of LY words you can unmute anytime so you don't have to raise your hand or anything think about how they're so poor they have to sell their donkey so they're how poor could we say that could we say they're so somethingly poor they're so terribly desperately I already have sadly that could go there too Think about how the people gave advice. Um, they somethingly gave advice to them. <laughs> I know these LY words, sometimes they're hard to pull out of the brain. And I gave you guys a printed LY list. You guys are welcome to use that anytime too. That, that will help um, as you're writing. I'm thinking of like, this is kind of a weird L-Y word, but unhelpfully, unhelpfully, because they think they're helping, but they're really not helping this family, unhelpfully. Um... I 
I what about I'm... oddly? Okay, I like that one. Oddly. I'm trying to think too of um when you don't ask for advice and somebody gives it to you anyway. Maybe like un unwelcomely. <laughs> Nobody welcomed the advice unwelcomely. That might have an E in it. Does it? Do you guys know? You know me in spelling. Unwelcomely. Could we do unwantedly? Unwantedly, yes. There is an E here, by the way. I messed up on that unwantedly I know some of these ly words we don't use very often so it is kind of hard to rack your brain over that um, how about the women who said you should ride remember the women were like somethingly said or somethingly shouted How about sarcastically is the first one that comes to my mind. Sarcastically. Because, you know, they're just busybodies. They're just looking for somebody to pick on, basically. And then the other one is enthuse. This is a big one. Enthusiastically. enthusiastically that's a good that's a pretty good list that you can use um, and remember you don't have to just stick to this list you can look at that one I gave you guys to print and use that as well so this week for your homework you are going to um, Allie's gonna work on her middle paragraph Abby's gonna work on including the message in her last paragraph and then we're all going to work on adding one LY adverb per paragraph. And you don't have to use just these, you know, you can go beyond that. And then you're going to add one who, which clause per paragraph. Um, and I do want you to add more to the story so um, find a place in there and hopefully you remember to double space because this is going to make it really messy and that's okay you can make it messy this is your rough draft you're working with you can add a little bit more to the story like a little bit more of the background about the son and the miller and guess what this is where we get to actually think outside the box because you don't have to add something that's already in the story you get to get creative on that um, you can say that he had a, a big family of like 10 kids, but he picked one, one of his sons to travel with him. I mean, you can make up, you can go crazy with that. I just want you to add one more detail about um, this at the beginning about the character or the setting. You can add another detail of your own that's not even in the story. That's what we're practicing this week is how to take an original keep the same theme with your story sequence chart, but then kind of make it your own as far as adding extra details that aren't even there. So I'll write that all out for you in Google Classroom so you can see the list of things you need to do. I do want to point out, I want you to keep this list at the very front of your binder, um, along with the Miller and his son, this story, keep this all at the front because you're working on it. That's where I, I like for you to keep it. I know there's a tab back there, but it's just way easier if it's all in the very front. Um, and then look in your binder for this checklist. It's on page 43. I want you to get into the habit of using your checklist for when you're writing. And these are pretty much the same as what you're used to seeing here, the name left, left side, and then uh, double spaced, 
and then your title centered and repeats one to three words from your final sentence. You got that. And then um, this is the one that's kind of new to your checklist is it follows the story sequence chart. This is page 43 if you're still looking for it, page 43. Each paragraph contains at least four sentences, but this is where you're going to add to that first paragraph a little more detail about their background, okay? Um, about the character or the setting. Then you have here paragraph one, paragraph two, paragraph three, dress ups. Underline one of each. So you're going to underline one LY in paragraph one, um, one LY in paragraph two, and one LY in paragraph three. But you can have more than one if you want. Okay, that's the point there. You can have two LY adverbs in paragraph one, but you only need to underline one of them. And then here, who, which clause, we talked a little bit about that last week. We'll talk more about that next week. Make sure you add one who, which to paragraph one, one who, which to paragraph two, and one who, which to paragraph three. You can have more than that, but you only need to underline one of each. Capitalization, in marks, complete sentences, and correct spelling. Now, your paper is going to be a giant mess, so that's one thing you got to try to like let go of if you're a neat freak, which I respect neat freaks. I'm kind of one, not a total extreme one, but I do like things tidy. This is hard for me to do is to just add words, draw arrows, put little carrots, add a sentence, add a who, which clause, uh, cross something out. So this is messy, okay? This is messy. Even if you had to use the margin and turn sideways and, and you know, fit it in there, that's okay, because this is your sloppy, rough draft. You're working with it. This is what I love about this class, because, okay, you get a basic story, and then you just, like, explode it. And it's like, you got stuff going everywhere. And then when you get to that final draft, you're like, whoa, that's actually pretty cool. That came out good. So don't do the final draft yet. This is only the sloppy rough draft. Using this checklist, and the only thing that's not on here that I'll put on your Google Classroom is you're going to add a detail about the character or the setting in that first paragraph that's made up by you. Do you guys have questions about that? Okay, no questions. Okay, um, so that is your homework along with your grammar. No questions about your homework. Okay, let's look at your binder for a second. I really want to help you get that organized. So, this is hard to do on Zoom, but I'm going to try. Um, and maybe you guys have noticed the tabs. Maybe you've started using these tabs back here, but we're going to start organizing your stuff as we go so that your binder isn't a giant mess. So what I want you to start with is everything you've already done, such as, remember way back when we did the blue ringed octopus? Already did that. We already read that. Blue ringed octopus. We already did carnivorous plants. That felt like forever. But that one, carnivorous plants. All of those stories that we already did, along with your keyword outline and your rough draft and your final draft, everything related to blue ringed octopus and carnivorous plants. I want you to move to behind finished, it's way back here, you see this tab right here, finished compositions, we're done with those. So everything that we're done with, you can put behind this tab back here. The out, the uh, Outlines, we haven't really been using these, but we're done with these stories, so you can move them back here in this part. That's okay. Everything that has to do with blue ringed octopus, everything that has to do with carnivorous plants, I think there's more. Let's go back here. 
Oh yeah, there is more. So this yellow page, just set it aside for a second, okay? Make note making outlines. Unmute and let me know if you guys are lost because I don't want to confuse you right here. So take this one out. It's actually page 15. Set it aside for a second. We already did disgusting or a delicacy. So you can take that out. This should be at the front of your binder, the stylistic techniques. All the yellow pages just set aside for a second. That stylistic techniques though should be in the very front of your binder. But the other yellow pages. This one, the checklist, you can take that out for disgusting and delicacy. We got the eagle and the jackdaw. We already did that. Now here it has the Komodo dragon. We didn't do that story. We're, we're not going to do that one. So we're, we're skipping that one. Um, the editor, the letter to the editor, you should have already given that to your parents whoever who whoever's doing your editing so that should not even be in there eagle and the jackdaw we did it done with it the komodo dragon one we're not gonna do so you can take that one out you guys tracking with me okay you good okay good yay the checklist for the eagle and the jackdaw don't need that anymore okay now we're to the miller, his son, and their donkey, and we are working on this, so you're gonna leave that part. That's what we're working on. The rest of this stuff goes behind finished compositions. Okay, so behind blue ringed octopus, behind all that. Whoops, that's not supposed to be in there. That was my mistake. Sorry, the Miller and his son and their donkey we are working on. So don't put it behind finished compositions. That was my mistake there. The rest of this stuff though goes back there. And along with these pages from the binder is your keyword outline for each one of these things and your rough draft for each one of these things and your final draft if we did one for each one of these things. So everything to do with these things goes back here behind finished compositions. Okay. Um, now, you guys good with me on that? You got that organized, still working on it? Did you get it, Allie? Good, I see Abby's still working, that's okay. While you're working, you can keep working on that. Just a, just a recap. This one, the stylistic techniques, you only have two things on here so far. That stays at the front of your binder, the very, very front, along with your LY adverb list, your how to make a great title, notes. Oh man, it's 1046, okay. I just need one more minute. Um, everything to do with the miller and his donkey goes in the very front, 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 because we're working on that. I'm just gonna have you organize these two things right here. Note making and outlines. This one's note making and outlines. These are just models for you. So do you see the tab that says Models, charts, and outlines looks like that. Models, charts, and outlines. Behind that tab, I want you to put this one that says unit one, note making outlines, that's page 15. And then this one, note making outlines, writing from notes, page 23. These two pages go behind that. The rest should be okay. You guys good with me so far? 
Yeah, okay, sweet. Even though we have a work in process tab, I mean, I guess I could give that your choice if you like to keep it work in progress or process. I like it at the very front. I do that in my own binder. At the very front makes more sense to me. Then I can move it to the back when I'm done and then I'm not like searching for it for class. So just know it's there but you can leave it at the very front of your binder. But if you're like OCD a little bit, I'm not gonna judge, okay? If you're OCD and you really wanna have it behind that tab, you can, okay, if you like that. I'm gonna put all my Miller and his son and the donkey and all that stuff right here at the very, very front. See, I'm OCD but not extreme, kinda of like I don't know, there's a spectrum. All right, you guys, I'll stop talking. It was a good class. You guys are on the right track. We're gonna keep working with this story. Hopefully the homework won't be too crazy this week. Um, let me know if you're like, you're blowing up, your brain is like maxed out or whatever. I need to know. I don't want you to slowly be dying a slow, painful death without me knowing. At least I can know. <laughs> And maybe maybe ease the pain a little bit so anything you guys want to add any questions you're good you guys are awesome have a great week I'll see you next Tuesday bye 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 Bronx see you next week <laughs>